Last year, Shimano announced the new Durace Di2, but they also announced the new Altegra Di2. And with that came the second generation, we'll say, of their power meter, or did it. Recently, I'd been looking for some parts for a few small consulting requests that I had received. And this meant searching for bike parts. When I came across this photo on, I, I think, Colorado Cyclist, to the uninformed observer, it's not really anything. It's a marketing gimmick of, look here, we have a circuit board under some plastics with a strain gauge. To someone well-versed in string gauge tech, and specifically correcting for unwanted forces and their impact on gauges, there was something that really stood out to me in that photo. And this could very well be a marketing-only photo. It could be an early version that they generated graphics for. But it's not good. Some of you might remember that I produced a video that went over most of the flaws of everyone's power meter related to the 9100 series. And unsurprisingly, Shimano was not best in the pack or anything like that, even though that they had complete total 100% control over their own crank geometry. They were kind of on the lower end of... of at least making a accurate power meter uh, something and to some people there is a level of repeatability there but uh, as someone who cycles very wonkily um, I'm able to have it generate anywhere from negative four to negative eight percent errors easily um, and I can actively at this point change my pedaling style in order to induce those errors in basically anyone's crank set at this point. And I, I've, it's through understanding which way the forces cause those errors. So even in Shimano's patent, they had tried to do something that would help, but didn't have a huge impact, or at least probably less than they expected due to most of their manufacturing variances. And that is on their bend element, they tilt at the gauge. Now, there is some oversimplification on how strain gauges work in terms of certain types. And there is a term of a shear gauge, which is sort of a shear gauge, but it's sort of not a shear gauge. It's basically just regular strain gauges on 45 degrees. And if you have a very simple strain field, that you're, you should be able to see shear. It's actually much more complicated once you make geometries more complicated and three-dimensional. And that's kind of the Achilles heel of almost anyone's design at this point on the 9100 series. What happens is some amount of shear is transmitted in that area through uh, coupling and through things like twist and through things like asymmetry. By virtue of having, instead of parallel gauges, you tilt one, the theory is that you could probably tune that amount of tilt related to the amount of shear that you are going to expect due to the asymmetry in your physical crank design. If you haven't figured out where I'm going with this, you should probably take a look at the view of the 9200 crank. Notice how they made the crank symmetric again? Well. I have always suspected that that was because they realized all the problems that their asymmetric, weird shape design induced. And while it may have had some slight benefits on stiffness, generally no one can actually perceive that increased stiffness considering most frames are, are the weak point for deflection or twist in the arm. If at the end of the day they decide to just make a symmetric arm, if, so long as it's the same weight, no one's really going to care because very few people will do stiffness measurements. And that leads us to, if that gauge design, at least according to my understanding, and I believe what is written in the patent, is to correct for the asymmetric shape, why does the 9200 
power meter from Shimano have a tilted strain gauge if it's symmetric? What's interesting about noticing this now is that a few months ago, Shane Miller or GP Llama had done a video that basically tested a, I'm going to guess production unit. I don't see how he could have gotten anything else, um, but he had to like leave all the packing tape type of stuff on it uh, because it wasn't his. And his findings weren't great. I mean, they were better than the 9100, but they certainly did exhibit problems. Problems that I suspect are generally related to using the last generation strain gauge that was designed for an asymmetric crank to correct for its problems on a symmetric crank that has, well, it should have reduced problems in some ways, but it's hard to know about coupling. Um, and at this point, it seems pretty likely that they still didn't get that design right, at least according to that one, albeit one, early preview of what has basically been in development for another three years. So in conclusion, I think it's still a good time to be weary of any power meter on the new and updated Shimano crank sets until you start getting some actual data from the truster reviewers, namely DC Rainmaker and Shane Miller. At this point, there's very few people out there that really know how to build a test suite around testing a power meter. So that's really all I wanted to talk about. Just one photo that may indicate that there is a potential that they screwed up their power meter again. The other potential reasons that they may have a stock photo like this that is wrong is marketing mistake. Someone exported the CAD with whatever gauge was in it. They did a disassembly, they rendered it out, and they threw it up. It's, it's marketing. Accuracy in marketing in terms of these photos of technical things, no one's really calling out. Well, I guess except me. But, I mean, it could, it could be that. It could be a decoy. It could have just been any number of reasons that it was generated. So we don't know for a fact that it is representative of what is inside. There, there is, however, a chance that this is legit and that they are still using that methodology to correct for something. And if they are, it's likely that left to right or non-drive side to drive side coupling effect that will still remain by having an integrated spider. It's pretty hard to get away from that problem, uh, especially in any of the forearm designs. It was a little easier with some of the five arm designs. Um, not a hidden bolt design that actually made things basically impossible. So that's all I kind of wanted to discuss today was that we've got this photo out there and it's revealing something and it may be revealing that we might already know that Shimano is going to have problems on their crank or it could just be a uh, a marketing mistake and no one actually cares except me. If you want to learn a little bit more about what actually caused the problems with the Shimano R9100 and R8000, as well as their previous generations, 9000 and going to say 6800. Um, check out my other video. It's kind of long, but if you're into really understanding the root cause of this stuff and how it can truly affect your power measurements, uh, definitely check it out. It's a bit long. Um, me put it on, on the background and, and look at the what you see is the interesting parts. Um, but I spend a lot of time, and this was primarily in response to requests I was getting from uh, multiple reviewers actually, and they wanted to know if Companies responses are marketing BS or if they're legit and well You can watch their videos um, With that take care and looking forward to getting some something weird out next week